So what are you guys? We are the Smartwood family. Hey guys, this video is going to be about the uh, principle of inclusion and exclusion. So, hi guys, so we've been doing a lot of MCAT lately. So I figured this is my chance. I'm not at the office, but it's the only time I could squeeze this in to do some videos where we talk about pi, okay, or applying pi. So the principle of inclusion and exclusion. So if we're looking at this, uh, and if you guys remember, we'll do this form of it. You know, you can check out the video for the general form, but let's say you have three A1, union A2, union A3. And if you guys remember that, it's to compute the size of this guy, it's going to be the size of A1 plus the size of A2 plus the size of A3. Take away uh, the intersect, the size of the intersection of A1 and A2, take away the size of the intersection of A2 and A3, and A1 and A3, right? But you add back the triple intersection. Okay? All right, no big deal. Sorry, that was out of a camera angle for a second, but... So let's take a look. So let's say you want to know the number of four-letter words, right? They either start with a consonant or end with a consonant. Okay. That's an O for or. Okay. And, you know, obviously we're talking English here, so this is uh, 26. So 26 letters. We have 21 consonants and five vowels. Many different ways to do this, but let's just try a mellow way and practice pi. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to break this into cases where we're happy. So one way to be happy is you can count the number of guys that start with a consonant. So let's do the guys that start with a consonant. Okay? It's going to be a goal. Okay, so how many guys actually start with a consonant? Well, um, so how many guys actually start with a consonant? Well, there are 21 consonants out there. So you can pick any of those. After that, you have free main for the second letter, and for the third letter, and for the fourth letter, right? And remember, in the middle of making choices, you multiply. So this is the number of four-letter words that start with a consonant. Okay, but there's another way to do it, right? You're happy if you start with a consonant, but you're also happy if you end with a consonant. So different ways of getting what we want. We're going to add them together. So I guess it's going to be anything for the first, anything for the second, anything for the third, and a consonant for the fourth. Okay. And this would be almost perfect. The only problem is, is that we've overcounted. Because this is a possible because here when we're counting this, we're just saying the first guy is a consonant, but the, the rest could be whatever you want. So it's also possible that the last guy happens to be a consonant, right? So to fix that, we need to take out the overcount. So how many ways can you end up with the first letter being a consonant and the final letter being a consonant? Well, 21 choices for the first, second and third could be whatever, 21 choices for the last one. So you multiply these together, and there you go. So now, right, this is N with a consonant. Right, and this right here is uh, start and end. Okay, excuse the handwriting, but I want to get through this because we have some uh, more interesting examples coming up. But anyway, this is it. So this would be a way of counting this, okay? Um, Now, I don't want to formalize this really, but if you wanted to do that, you can think of this as the size of A1, right? Right here. Where A1 is what? All the four letter words that start with a consonant. And A2 is all the four letter words that end with a consonant. And now we're going to take out the intersection, right? So now what I want to do is I basically want to play the same game, but I want to make the problems a little bit more interesting. So let's say um, we have three urns that are distinguishable. Doesn't matter what they are. So we can make them say a red urn a blue urn, maybe a green urn. Okay. And let's say we have 30 balls. But you can't tell these apart, so these are indistinguishable. Let's start with this. Before we do the pie stuff, sorry, I was about to lead into the pie stuff, let's just review this if it's been a while. So you can also check out that video if you're resting on this, but basically the idea is one way of counting this is you can imagine lining up all these 30 indistinguishable balls. Okay. Just doing whatever they're doing, like this. So imagine they're 30 out like this, okay? And you want to encode the three different containers. But really, to encode the containers, you can just encode them where the dividers are. So you need to put in somewhere two dividers, okay? So how many total objects do you have there? Well, you have the 30 balls, right? But you also have the two dividers. 
So you've got 32 guys all together. Okay. And so you can imagine you have 32 slots, like slot 1 up to slot 32. And what you need is place down in each slot either a ball or a divider, right? But once you put down the balls and dividers, you know exactly what's going on. All right. So in that case, if you go back to it, it's like you have 32 slots here, right? And you can either choose 30 of them to be the balls, or you can choose two of them to be where the dividers are. It's the same thing. Right. I'm going to be mellow and just use this method. If, again, if you're rusty on this, check out the video where we basically do this from scratch. Okay? But I want to start from this point. And the question we just is, how many ways can you put 30 indistinguishable guys into three distinguishable urns? We'd be done. So it would literally be 32 choose 2. Okay? No big deal. So we want to put a slight twist. Let's add this condition. Let's say um, the maximum number of balls in a given urn is 10. Okay, so that's the max number. Okay, if that's the max number, it changes things. Because there's some, like the way we were counting, you could have had 15 here, right? And then 5 here, and then 10 there. But that's not going to work, because the max number we can have is 10. So let's figure out a way of doing this. Well, first, I want to start with the total. Okay? And maybe the strategy is take out the number of ways that don't work. So all the bad ways. Okay? All right, well, the total number we already know. We already know that's going to be 32. Sorry. 32 choose 2. That's going to be with no restrictions, nothing. Okay, so what we need to take out are the ways that don't work. Okay, so what's one way we can mess up? Well, you've got these three urns, right? And the only way, and everything is good as long as you don't have more than 10. So one way to mess up is have more than 10. So I'm going to deliberately place 11 here. If I deliberately place 11 here, we're guaranteed to mess things up, right? Because the max is supposed to be 10. But the thing is, there are a lot of scenarios that play out. So what we want to do is, where do you put the rest? You have 30, right? You force 11 to be in the first one, just because you feel like it. And now you need to place down 19 others, because the 19 others can go wherever you want, right? So if it happens they all end up here, that's great. But if it happens they're spread out here, 8, I'm sorry. So if it happens they're spread out here, say like 10 and 9, that's fine too. But as long as we have that 11 here, right, we're beyond the max number. And that's really all we wanted. Okay, so no big deal. Okay, so then, um, so then how are we going to do this? We're actually back to the old game. You've got 19 balls you want to place down in these three guys, right? To distinguish these three guys, you need two dividers. So it's like you have 21 objects, and if you decide where to place the two dividers, you're good. So this actually counts. So let's write that here. Uh, I don't want to be too confusing, but let's put down 19 plus 2. Choose two. Okay, so that's the number of ways of guaranteeing at least one guy is over the mark. Okay, but now what I do is I arbitrarily pick the leftmost guy. So in our set, that was a red guy to be the one that has too many. Could have been blue, could have been green. So there are three ways to do it with red, with blue, with green. So I'm going to multiply this by three. Okay, if you want to be kind of systematic, you can say three, choose one. There's, there's red, blue, and green. I can choose any one of them, right, to be the one that we have too many in. Okay, no big deal. But now there's a slight twist. So right now, what we've done is We've counted, okay, all the different ways we can have too many in red, too many in blue, too many in green. Is there a way to maybe like overlap where you have too many in red and blue? So let's just count it out. So if you have this set up, right, we can stick 11 here. Is it possible to stick 11 there? So that would be 22. So 30 minus 22, 8 to spare, definitely can do it. Now these 8 are free to go wherever they want. So how many ways can you do an arrangement like this or work with an arrangement like this? Well, put the 11 and 11 down. Place the 8 wherever you want, so it's like 8 guys, placing 8 balls anywhere you want, 3 different containers, so 2 dividers to identify the 3 different containers, right? And if we choose from those 10 spots, we choose where to place the 2 dividers, we are good. So it's actually 8 plus 2, choose 2 ways of getting this set up. We have at least 11 here, at least 11 there, and then the remaining 8 can go wherever you want, okay? So if we do that, uh, let's, put it up here. let's write it cleanly down here. So what we had was we had 32 choose two ways to do it all together. We're going to subtract off all the stuff that doesn't work. Our first round was, okay, we took the ones where we had too much in one, right? But there's a possibility there's some overlap. So what we need to do is we need to take out the overlap. So you subtract off 8 plus 2 choose 2 because that's the number of ways you can actually have this and that over the maximum count. Okay, but remember, we arbitrarily picked red and blue, right? But we could have picked any pair. So how many pairs are out there to pick? Well, there are three guys. We need to pick two of them. That's good. Okay. But now, theoretically, we can think about adding back. Is there a way to actually have all three be over the count? 
but that would require at least 11, 11, 11. That's 33, that's too much. So actually we don't need any more, so we're good. So I wanna look at the uh, number of solutions of this guy, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 30. But now we wanna put it, so by the way, how would you do it if you're just free to do whatever you wanted? These guys could be anything, right? Well, anything, let's say zero or positive. If that's the case, then it would be like this. It's equivalent to putting around 30 balls, right? And putting them into one, two, three, four different containers. But remember, to identify four different containers, you only need three dividers. So it'd be 30 plus three, choose where those three dividers go, and we're good to go. So this might look familiar because this is identical to what we did before. Just that instead we had have, we have one, two, three containers, right? Now it's effectively like we have four containers. So it's like the same problem, just framed in a different way. Okay, but same twist. Let's make it so that each one of these guys is trapped between zero and say 10, just like before. Okay, so let's do it. So uh, remember, how many ways can we mess this up? Let's subtract off. So one way to mess up is to have too many say in the leftmost guy. So if that's the case, well, how are we gonna do that? We're actually gonna take the leftmost guy and we're gonna stack 11 in there, because that would be too many. Okay, and then we're gonna place the remaining 19, so it's 30 minus 11 is 19, right? Anywhere you want. So that's equivalent to saying you have 19 guys you wanna place down in four different guys, so you need three dividers, choose where the dividers go, okay? Now we assume that's the leftmost guy, but it could be in any one of the four, so you can multiply by four, if you're trying to be systematic, four choose one, right? Okay. Because we just said one of them has too many, but it's also possible that when we're doing that, we put no restrictions on anything else, so it's possible that like maybe the first two guys have too many, right? So we need to take out that double intersection. Is that even possible? Mm -hmm. 11 in the first one and 11 in the second one. Sure, you'd have 22, 22 minus 30, I mean 30 minus 22 leaves you eight left. You still have eight you can place down. So it's very similar to what we did before, but this time instead of requiring two dividers because you have four guys, you need three dividers. So eight plus three, choose three. Okay, how many ways can you pick a pair out? Instead of three, choose two because you have four guys now. It's four, choose two, okay? And then theoretically, so let's just do this for fun. Theoretically, you could look at the triple intersections, right? But the triple intersections would involve what? Just like before. It would require 11, 11, 11. And you only, that's already 33. You only have 30 to work with. So this guy is not a factor. But hopefully this gave you a feel for some of these pi problems. If you guys want to do some more, just let me know.